My name is Justin Brighthop, and I'm here today to spread the good news of the gospel of Jesus and talk to you about some things. Um, I'm going to be reading from the Bible today, Hosea chapter 10. And uh, basically we are going to be talking about judgment and also how to get out of it, uh, God's uh, righteousness, and, and how to come underneath that. And uh, some people out there watching my videos have probably said that I'm not talking enough about judgment and warning people about God's divine wrath, so... We're going to do that today. God has laid it upon my heart. He's told me that there are people out there, people that listen to me and watch these videos, people that I'm dealing with, that have been offered God's grace, and they've chosen not to stand under it. They've chosen not to stand under the uh, doorposts in Egypt, where they put the blood over the, the doorposts. They've chosen to step out from under that, and to live under the law and under God's judgment instead. So... Let's uh, let's get started. Isaiah chapter 10, in the New International Version. Now, Hosea is talking about Israel um, as basically a nation that God blessed and, and prospered. And it could also be talking about Israel, the man himself, or the people in power and authority that are ruling in Israel, that sort of thing. Um, so in our modern times... Uh, it can be talking about individuals, people. It can be talking about a city, a county, a nation, anything like that, where God builds people up, puts them in authority, and then because of compromise and weird, strange beliefs and, and worshiping other gods, false gods, maybe even themselves, you know, a lot, I will say late, recently, um, a lot of people have told me on the internet that they actually believe that they are a god, that they are God, and that everyone is a god, and that we can we they just worship themselves, and and that's what they do. Or some people worship nature; uh, they try to get into spiritualism, or or and this is a lot more common than you would think, um, especially in the groups of people that think that they're enlightened, that think that they are going to try to oppose Satan, they think they're going to try to oppose the New World Order, and they don't realize that they're following the doctrine of the devil, that they're following what the New World Order that Satan wants them to follow. As long as they're not following Jesus, then they're doing what Satan wants them to do. Satan is content with people worshiping themselves and worshiping creation and worshiping stones and these sorts of things. So, Israel was a spreading vine. He brought forth fruit for himself. As his fruit increased, he built more altars. And it kind of sounds like the rule of King Solomon, kind of. As it, his land prospered, he adorned his sacred stones. Now, see, that I'm just going to stop right there in the first verse because I want to attribute that back to uh, King Solomon. Because King Solomon, he built a whole bunch of altars for a whole bunch of false gods. And... Uh, like pretty much every different type of god that there was that men had invented and adorned sacred stones. That's part of the religion. Now, I could go on and elaborate because in Solomon's time, there was a lot more that they did. They tied people to poles and molested them. They did all kinds of things. They burnt people. Um, there was a lot more to it than that. But we're going we're gonna to keep going with Hosea 10 here. Their heart is deceitful. I think one translation says that they deceives themselves, or they've been deceived as well. And now they must bear their guilt. The Lord will demolish their altars and destroy their sacred stones. Now, God has been telling me this. He's been showing me this throughout the Bible. He's been showing me, talking to me, that now he's He's done dealing with these people that, that are refusing to listen, and he's going to come through, and he's going to destroy uh, their sacred stones. His, the fire of the Spirit is going to come through. Then they will say, we have no king, because we did not revere the Lord. But even if we had a king, what would he do for us? Now, in modern times, that's kind of interesting, because we aren't supposed to have a king. Not not at least a, a earthly king, um, a leader. And, of course, the Bible speaks against that anyway. But when people follow Satan, it's eventual that there's going to be a king, a ruler, whether they're legitimate or false Satan will will try to have them uh, inserted as a leader. And they might be someone with very lowly authority, maybe someone who doesn't even have any real authority, and yet they've been established as a king um, over the enemy agents and over 
tried to extend that uh, jurisdiction over God's people. And that's where these false kings always get themselves in trouble. Because um, here in the United States, we, we don't have kings. But there are people that pretend to have the authority of a king and who exercise that authority. People that um, believe that their jurisdiction exceeds unto the ends of the earth and that people have to do whatever they say. Um, I remember one man telling me that I guess when I was growing up there was someone in my area that said they were the king over this county and that they could do whatever they wanted to and that people had to listen to them. And uh, so this is this is interesting because so what if but even if we had a king what could he do for us and there's a couple things in there first of all um men can't protect us from god or god's judgment that's that's number one number two let's say that you have a whole bunch of people in authority or you know people that are used to following um a king a leader a false leader and all of a sudden this this false leader's gone um first of all they would they wouldn't know what to do because they wouldn't have anyone to follow and if they did he still couldn't save them he could make them more false promises that of uh, that he could save them but he really couldn't save them from what was coming um so now we get down to i believe it's verse four they make many promises they take false oaths and make agreements therefore lawsuits spring up like poisonous weeds in a plowed field. So we're going to stop there for a moment, and I want to talk about false oaths, false promises. I have a list of some of them here, some different types. So um, some people promise on oath to uphold and defend the Constitution. Uh, some people swear to protect and serve uh, we the people, uh, to obey God. Some people swear to uphold and defend justice, mercy, honor, and truth. Uh, some people swear just to listen to and follow God. A lot of pastors say, well, we'll listen to and do whatever God wants us to do. And then they end up compromising, deciding to follow uh, something else so that they can have job security or whatever they think, false security from the enemy. Um, or promise that you, that no harm will come to you or someone else. So, so maybe you've made that promise to someone that that if they, as long as as long as they're around or you're doing what they're saying, that no harm will come to you or someone else. How about the promise that evil men will go to jail or be executed? That's a promise that's been made to me before by authorities. Is that, you know, evil men, detestable men, pedophiles, rapists, whoever, that they're they're going to go to jail or be executed or whatever, you know. Um, that they're not going to get away with it. Promise uh, not to compromise. Some people just promise not to compromise. Um, promise or swear to tell the truth. There's a big one right there. And without so help me God, it's it's difficult to tell the truth, isn't it? And uh, so, anyways, so we're going to keep reading about this, and we're going to talk about the, the we're going to finish this talking about the judgment that comes as a result, and then we're going to talk about how God's people escaped that judgment, um, and uh, in the times of of Egypt when they were slaves there, they were not perfect people. They committed quite a bit of sins while they were there. And yet they escaped God's judgment until they chose to come out of the covenant of grace and go into a covenant of the law. And we'll talk about that too. So, the people who live in Samaria fear for the calf idol of Beth Avon. So the, I guess they're afraid of this idol. Its people will mourn over it being gone. I didn't. I added the being gone part. They're going to mourn over it. And so will its idolat idolatrous priests. Uh, those who had rejoiced over its splendor because it is taken from them into exile. Yeah, see, so I was right. It's going to be taken from them. Um, it will be carried to Assyria as tribute for the great king of Assyria. Ephraim will be uh, disgraced. Israel will be ashamed of its wooden idols. Samaria and its king will float away. So it's going to be a flood. Uh, like a twig on the surface of the waters. The high places of wickedness will be destroyed. I'm going to say that again. The high places of wickedness will be destroyed. It is the sin of Israel. Thorns and thistles will grow up and cover their altars. Um, now, that, of course, sounds like old buildings, you know, old buildings that they, 
they used to have that they're going to be abandoned. Um, then they will say to the mountains, cover us, and to the hills, fall on us. Since the days of Gibeah, whoever that is, you have sinned, O Israel, and there you have remained, did not war overtake the evildoers of Gibeah. When I please, I will punish them. Nations will be gathered against them to put them in bonds for their double sin. Ephraim is trained, a trained heifer that loves to thresh, so I will put a yoke on her fair neck. I will drive Ephraim, Judah must plow, and Jacob must break up the ground. Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap the fruit of unfailing love, and break up your unplowed ground, for it is time to seek the Lord until he comes, and showers and it showers righteousness on you. And because whatever you sow is what you're going to reap. Now, there are times when we don't sow anything and yet we reap it, and that is where we come under God's righteousness, and he sows things, and we end up reaping what he's sown. And it talks about that in the Bible, too. Um, but you've planted wickedness. You have reaped evil. You have eaten the fruit of deception. That's what I was talking about before. The translation says you've been deceived. Because you have, you have depended on your own strength and on your many warriors. Now, I'm going to stop there. There are people... Uh, whether it be a criminal organization of of uh, gangs or a corrupt business or whether it be the government itself we're talking about um having having a, the the they're depending on their own strength and on their warriors now who are their warriors their warriors are thugs they're armed they have guns uh, and this can apply just as much to a corporation or a uh the gang or organized, you know, criminal organization as it can to a government that is operating as an organized criminal organization. It can apply anywhere. It can apply to a church. So they got thugs that are going to come out. There are many warriors. The roar of battle will rise against you people, so that all your fortresses will be devastated. I'm going to repeat that again. The roar of battle will rise against you, your people, so that all your fortresses will be devastated. So Shalman devastated Beth. Our bell on the day of battle, when mothers were dashed to the ground with their children. Thus will it happen to you, O Bethel, because your wickedness is great. When that day dawns, the king of Israel will be completely destroyed. When that day dawns, the king of Israel will be completely destroyed. So that's the leader. That's whoever has appointed themselves in charge. They're going to be completely destroyed. Now, how do they get out of this? God offers a way out. And so what happened was in Egypt, you see, um, it was time for God's judgment to come. He'd sent Moses, he'd sent his servant to Pharaoh to warn him. But the truth of the matter was that the the Israelites and the Egyptians were all, all sinful under the sight of God. They all deserved God's punishment. They all deserved God's wrath. And so the only way that God could bring his judgment and look the other way and not um, judge the Israelites was for them to put the do blood on the doorposts. And what this symbolized was the righteousness of God, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus, being put over them, being under God's righteousness to escape judgment. And so, basically, this worked for the Israelites. Um, the Israelites grumbled against God. They complained. They worshipped false gods. Uh, they did all kinds of things. They grumbled against Moses. They were very sinful people. And yet, God gave them a way out. He gave them, his people, a way to come under his righteousness and have faith in that righteousness and accept it. And they did. They had their supper. They painted the blood over the doorposts. They had faith in God's righteousness. And he spared them. Okay? And this continued. Um, they were going in the desert, and I don't remember if it was for 10, day, 10 years or what it was, but th this continued until they got to the, the bottom of the mountain where God gave the Ten Commandments. And at that point, the people decided that they could follow God's laws and that they wanted to be under God's laws. They no longer wanted the covenant of grace, of God just letting them um, sin and then repent and turn around. They, they didn't want that anymore. They wanted 
God's divine judgment and his laws. And so that's what he gave them. Um, he gave them what they asked for. And so they went out from under grace to under the law. And there are a lot of people that live under the law. And I have been told by a lot of people that those who live by the law will die by the law. Those people that that think that they can they can live under the law or pretend to live under the law, they, they can't. And so all of us are sinful. All of us um, have made mistakes in the sight of God. And all of us deserve judgment. And his judgment is coming. It has to come because God is just and he can't look down upon his people and watch them suffer forever. He can't watch injustice forever. And so his judgment is coming. It's coming, I believe, all across the world, but I know for sure it's coming to the United States. And I'm telling you this as a warning, and I'm telling you that you can easily escape this judgment by simply stepping underneath the righteousness of Jesus and saying, it's not my righteousness, it's his. It's this, the righteousness of Jesus that's going to save me. And when God looks down, he will see the righteousness of his son. He won't see me. And I will be spared from that judgment. And it is literally that simple. It is that simple. You just have to have faith in in Jesus' righteousness, in his sacrifice. Step underneath it and then let him do the rest. You invite him into your heart. You invite the Holy Spirit into your heart to change you, to work on you. So that you um, will gradually work towards where you're not sinning as much anymore. And, and you continue to live under grace. You continue to love love and live under God's righteousness and that's where you need to be but unfortunately there are a lot of people out there like Pharaoh who are very stubborn who don't believe that they should step under God's righteousness um, they see what it is it's explained to them in detail and they have scholars that can read the the Bible and read God's word and and understand it and explain it to them and they still decide that they're not going to step underneath God's righteousness. They believe in themselves to be gods, just like Pharaoh did. Pharaoh believed that he was a god, or at least he convinced himself that he believed it, and he convinced the other people around him, and he would not relent. And they were so stubborn about all of this that they erased it from their history books. They erased uh, the account of of the, the Israelites leaving. They erased a lot of things out of their history books. Um, they tried to anyway. There were some evidence left of some things but there were people they didn't like there were pharaohs they didn't like that they'd erase from their history books because they didn't want any mistakes anything they'd done wrong to be recorded in their their history books unlike us we try to learn from history they uh, were embarrassed ashamed of their history and so they would erase their their history books so anyway um so i encourage you i implore you to please um, when God's judgment is coming now, I, I, I beg you, please step under the righteousness of Jesus. You know, um, rec recently there was someone that I talked to on the telephone that decided that they're not going to stand under the righteousness of Jesus, that they're just going to continue to try to ignore God and ignore his offer and ignore his judgment and I, you know, I feel really sad for that man and his family and for anyone else that's like him. Um, and, you know, my heart just sank because I know what's coming. I know, I know exactly what's coming. I know a lot about it. And I know that it's God's fight. And I know that there's a lot of things that are going to be going on that, that, that God has complete control of. And I know that it has to happen. And so, it's very sad for me to watch it because I have Jesus living inside of me and Jesus loves everyone, even the sinful people. We're all sinners. He loves us the same. And so it's very sad for him to watch people that are stubborn, that refuse to repent, that refuse to turn around because then Jesus has to watch. He knows what's coming. He knows the destruction that's that they've chosen. And it is a choice, by the way. It's just like the choice to paint the blood on the top of the doorposts. You can simply choose to dip your paintbrush in the blood and put it over the doorposts, or you can choose not to do it. It's that simple. Now, of course, there was a whole ritual involved with that process, but today 
we don't have to go through that ritual unless God calls us to do something similar. We, we don't have to go through that ritual. We don't have to paint blood on our doorposts. Now, there are all kinds of people, Luciferians and people that follow Satan, that try to put blood, they, they try to, to get right with blood, and they try to gain power with it, the blood of chickens, the blood of goats, the blood of themselves sometimes, if they can't find any other. Um, I've watched uh, video documentaries about it, and and that blood is not good enough. It's not God's blood. It's not going to work. Now, of course, in Egypt, the lamb, of, or the blood of the lamb wasn't really good enough either. It was the blood of Jesus that was good enough, and the and the lambs were simply stand-ins for Jesus Christ. But um, I want you to know that it is that simple. All you have to do is stand under Jesus and receive His righteousness. Why would you choose not to? Think of it this way. Think about your children. Okay? you got your children buckled up safely in a car seat in the back of your car. And you're driving down the road. And you chose to do that. Or would you choose to put your child on the seat without a seat belt, without any kind of restraint, and drive straight into an oncoming semi-truck or a train? You can see it coming. You can see the train coming. You can see the semi-truck coming. Despite the lies, despite the deception, you can see it. You know the truth. So the question is, are you and your child and your family going to step under the righteousness of Jesus and avoid that truck, avoid that collision, and have protection for you and your family? Or are you going to deliberately drive you and your family straight into the oncoming judgment? They don't deserve it. They don't deserve to be driven straight into what you're choosing for your own families. Okay? Now, why is God, does God do this? Why is this just? Why is it justice? Well, I'll tell you why. The Bible explains it clearly. It says that however you raise your children, they're going to walk in it. They're going to grow up to be that way. Maybe even twice as bad as you. And if you're good, maybe twice as good as you. But the truth is, is that, that you, you're causing a whole new problem. If you're, if you are an evil man or an evil woman, and you're raising a family, and, and, and those people have a darkness ahead of them because of your teaching and your lifestyle and your example to them, then the justice of God is going to come on all of you to prevent that from happening. God has to prevent this stuff from happening. He can't watch it forever. He can't watch sinful people give birth to sinful people that rule over God's people, that are tyrants to God's people, that are mean to God's people. He can't do it because he loves all of us equally. He loves all of us as if we were his own children. And he can't watch thousands of people suffer because of 30 people. You know, he, he just, he can't do it. He can't do that. And uh, so, anyways, like, comment, share, and subscribe. And remember, God loves you. Jesus loves you. And he died on the cross for everyone, individually. So, when he died on the cross, they said that if he, if, if it would have just been for the sake of one, just for one man or woman that was willing to stand under his righteousness, that he would go through all of that for just one of us, any of us, the worst of us. Okay, and so his love and his mercy is there. But I'm telling you, if we don't step under God's righteousness, then his judgment won't be able to be stopped. I want you to imagine, I want you to imagine a 300 ton press, okay, that has nothing to restrain it from falling. A press like this, this type of a press. And, and it's just like 300 tons of weight. And you're underneath it. And the only thing that can keep it from coming down on you is Jesus standing there and holding it up and bearing the burden for you. Okay? That is literally what you are facing right now. That is what the people of this nation are facing right now. Is that 
the the 300 tons of justice or 500 tons or however big you need to imagine is coming down and we cannot escape it unless we choose to come under the righteousness of jesus i don't know how much more clear that can be made to you but i pray right now in the name of jesus that there would be spiritual clarity and that deception would be broken off you right now that that all of the the darkness and the sin and the evil that clouds your judgment that clouds your conscious and turns it to darkness that makes your conscious dark that that changed it from righteousness from common sense um that that be broken off of you right now and that god's light and his love would just flood you that he would come in that his fire his spirit would just come through you and purge you of all that evil so that you can get in his ways so that you can come under him and and live under him know that you're still flawed know that you still have problems like we all do but live under jesus please i pray for you i beg of you in jesus name amen